right, here starts the next episode. Uh, just finished off filming the last one, but what I'm planning to do this year is to totally fabric this entire area. We're done trying to going for historic accuracy. We're going for, you know, peak minimum labor to maintain the plants. We're going to put down white landscape fabric the whole way across. I'm going to put the plants at 24 inch spacing. We're probably going to shrink the active bed down maybe to 35, 36 foot or something like that so I can maximize the use of a 300 foot roll to have a probably a six foot buffer all the way around maybe only four foot up here. I guess six foot up here on the front because I'm going to set the plants back two foot so set the plants back six foot neither side and have to anyway I gotta do the math on that yet and figure it out uh, may just go back to four rows um, that's probably now I'm thinking about it, probably what I need to do um, and then we're also going to get the irrigation system in I'm going to run a three quarter inch supply line all the way up here to basically where the pump is and then similar to what I did on my pollinator garden over there I'm going to put in a four by four plumb that up in plumb that up through conduit into a um, into a pipe nipple, run that over to a spigot, have a splitter on the spigot so I can have a hose to you know spot irrigate if I need to or wash hands or something like that. And additionally, have that run up to you know a whole um, irrigation system head, filter, filter, vacuum breaker, uh, pressure regulator. Actually, I'm not doing a vacuum breaker, but pressure regulator, filter, timer, all that stuff, and then run down in a half inch poly tube that'll run right up through the middle of the garden we'll have a walkway in the middle where we'll skip a plant and then that'll go to half inch emitter line with 12 inch spacing and then every 24 inches I'll put a plant and that should be able to irrigate everything more than sufficiently uh, and yeah that should re basically eliminate all of my needing to weed or water anything and the plant should probably get up consistently to about you know what I had the first year about seven eight foot uh, I'm also not planning to continue doing the um, this sort of bed alley system I think we're going to flatten it all out I may just kind of leave an undulation in there and put the plants on top of the hill um, just kind of for water saturation purposes um, so that I don't flood the seeds out but still you know maybe leave we'll, we'll figure it out I'm not gonna go crazy with the topography anymore um, I'm also going to improve the deer fence we are going to make this 17 gauge electric fence wire the whole way around I'm gonna I just need to pull those out for whatever reason those folded in I'm gonna add in a couple more T posts as well uh, to hold everything up and we're going to have those on insulators up here and then we're also going to have a set a row of tensioners over there so I can pull the wire tight and uh, then I'll work out some other gate system over here. But hopefully we won't need to weed it anymore. It'll water itself automatically. And uh, the deer will stay out thoroughly. And yeah, it'll, you know, I'll have white landscape fabric as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. That will reflect solar radiation so the roots won't cook. There won't be as much evaporation through the fabric. Um, you know, the plants may take a little bit longer to germinate in the spring, but that's, I'll just plant them slightly later and then that difference will be made up immediately. And that should also improve, uh, that, that should, having the, the fabric down one will reduce evaporation. One, because no weeds there transpiring, and two, uh, because the sun is not directly hitting it, having white landscape fabric will improve that immensely. So the plants will have more available water, which means we shouldn't be losing any bowls to, um, water stress, especially since they're irrigated. And then on top of that, we won't be getting the heat stress, which causes the water stress. And then maybe getting rid of a lot of these weeds down in here will kind of eliminate the stink bugs in the interior somewhat. Won't get them on the outside. They'll still come in from the field, but uh, we also plan to keep this cut a lot more. Um, we've bush hogged all of that over there and I'm gonna try and get that cut with a mower. So that should eliminate, you know, the, the stink bugs significantly. And yeah, that's my plan. I have got some of the fencing bought, got the irrigation and the fabric and the sod staples all ordered up. Uh, I need to get t posts still. But yeah, those, those are my general plans. So I will continue to give you updates as I implement everything. Okie dokie, cut all the old stocks down. 
I was thinking about taking all of those home and trying to process the seeds and seeing what I could salvage out of it, but my back hurts, my arms are tired, and this uh, set of loppers is too stiff, and uh, I'm just going to say to heck with it. We're going to leave those there, and I don't know whether or not I'm going to pile them all up in the back of the truck and drag them to the back of the field. We're stomping them down in the alleys yet. I don't really know. Probably going to drag them to the back of the field, but they're pretty brittle. Hopefully I can stomp them down. I would like to return as much of the cotton seed back to the soil as I can, but we'll see. But stocks are cut. Step one. All right, well, it's a week or two later. I don't even remember at this point, but I've got all the cotton stalks stacked up in piles, and I'm going to throw them on my trailer, haul them back to my house, and I'm going to see if I can save as many of the still intact bowls as I can, even if they're not good for cotton. Uh, and I think I'll keep those in a nice dry place so that when I want to experiment with uh, bowl sterilization for potential use in wreaths, I have something I can test with and, uh, you know, maybe give to somebody if they need bowls or something like that. The museum might want some. I don't know. But that's my plan for today. Huck them on the trailer, put a big old, throw a tarp over the top of them, and then a uh, bungee net and uh, see if I can haul them the 20 miles back to my house. And uh, hopefully they survive the trip. And then at some point, I will uh, pick all the bits out of them and uh, store them. And uh, this will also um, get all of the sticks out of my way. As much as I would like to put them in the ground, I don't think my tiller will like tilling them. So I'm going to take all the woody debris and just dispose of it elsewhere uh, since I haven't had it really well and tramped down in here. Um, I'll just fertilize over the top and resupply whatever the seeds took out. So no big loss. All right, well, that's all loaded up. So the field is now pretty much clean. I uh, went around and took all the old fishing line and last little bits of electric fence wire off the poles. And so the next step, I think, is going to be to uh, put up the new, or I guess put down the new fabric. Pull up the old fabric, till everything up, figure out what size I need to do, put in the new fence, and uh, send her. Well, I came out here this morning, pulled up as many saw staples as I could around the edge, got the fabric mostly pulled up, and I'm going to go around... Pull the center staples up, roll the stuff up, get it out of the way, then pull some stumps and get ready for tilling. All right, well that took longer than I thought it should, but uh, it's done, and I hope this camera isn't recording at 15 frames per second. We'll find out in post, but yeah. Oh lord, now we're gonna pull stumps and till. I'll probably just till the stumps in. Um, might as well. They're smaller than they were last year, and they tilled under just fine, as big as they were before. So we'll see. All right, well, I just finished pulling up all the cotton stumps and I cut all the grass in here so I can get in and till everything under and reshape the rows and move it around a little bit. And uh, I'm noticing something interesting. I just took this trenching shovel and pried up all of the cotton plants and uh, they all look like this. They don't have a tap root. Uh, they're going down about a foot and then spreading laterally. Um, I was led to believe that these guys formed a big old taproot, but they're not. This is only the only real one that has an actual taproot to it. So here's one that's kind of like typical of what they're doing. This is the taproot. It is bending sharply at a 90 degree angle about 9 inches below the surface of the soil. And it's just doing that. So, oops, I wonder if that has something to do with the ground, the water table underground, or if uh, there's some sort of like hard pan, subsurface hard pan or something going on. I can't really imagine that there is. I think it has something more to do with the water table. <laughs> I think they're getting down and hitting the water table and then turning and going laterally. Because um, I've dug plenty of holes out here. I've driven plenty of T-posts, and I can't recall any sort of, like, subsurface hard pan. I mean, I'll dig a hole right now on camera. Well, actually, well, there is kind of. It's not very hard, but it is there. That may just be the shovel, actually. But, you know, we're not talking about, oh, hey, piece of pottery. Neat. That's hand spun, too. 
pick that up later. I mean, I've already gone down about a foot, and oh, actually, maybe we do have a hard pan. I might need to get a subsoiler or something out here. That's interesting. That's more than my tiller can do. All right, so today we have a big tent, but that's irrelevant. I just spent the whole morning um, pulling all the old posts, putting in the new 10-foot posts on the corners, the two at the gate. That's going to be the new gate over there. Uh, whenever I pull everything taut, everything is going to pull outward. So all of these will come in like that, and those will split apart, and I will tie a support wire across the top at the correct width so that when they pull apart, they'll pull to the correct width and then stop. And yeah, I have the electric fence wire insulators up everywhere, seven per, um, five, five up from the ground, five, five, six, six, six or seven, and then six or seven, depending on how many doohickeys I had poking out of the ground. So that is all up. I just put down fertilizer. I put down four pounds of ammonium sulfate, which ended up being roughly, it was a fifth as much, um, nitrogen as I needed for irrigated cotton, but uh, it was also uh, about twice as much sulfur as I needed. I should come back out here with some urea, but uh, too late now. Um, anywho, we'll see how they do with limited nitrogen. Um, anywho, then I came out and I put down about a pound and a half myriad of potash, which is about 15 pounds an acre, just to be safe. I don't think they necessarily needed it, but with our sandy soils, it tends to run out, so might as well. Um, and yeah, I'm going to try and till about an hour and a half. And I just went to wash all the fertilizer off my hands and uh, we have problems. Um, so one, that's a problem, but that problem came from me. The real problem is we don't have any leathers left. The bottom leathers are totally rotten out. So I tried to take the well off and I tried to use the handle for leverage and uh, word of caution, don't. It's a terrible cast iron and it just snapped right off like that and also the top has a set screw and it just kind of boogered the set screw around uh, then i tried to take it off of the pipe with my pipe wrench and then jamming this in here with leverage uh, like that so i can slide my hand into that and slice it open and uh this this guy is not coming off the pipe but the pipe is spinning in the ground so i don't know what to do um we're putting in a whole new irrigation system so i probably should pull this well up um, and get rid of it, but it is kind of scenic. So I think what I'm going to do is go find another pipe wrench and do my darndest to take this guy off without exploding it any more than I already have. And uh, once we get that off, I'll just have to buy a new well pump. They're about 50 bucks, nothing huge. Well, I don't know, I bought them like five years ago, so uh, it might be more now, but they were like 50 bucks when I bought them, I guess 60 after tax but hopefully i can get one and if not i'll buy another handle and a new set of leathers that's still probably going to send me back 30 40 dollars so at that rate might as well just buy a new pump and then i'll take this home and repair it and then i won't use it for myself because i can't get a shallow well set up at my house because too much sand but anyway i digress so yeah that is the progress um i am going to attempt to till all of this and try and leave five rows again and then it will all be tilled up and we will put up the fence at a later date put down the whole irrigation system, then the fabric, then the fence wire, and uh, call it good. Okie dokie. I got it halfway tilled yesterday before I had to call it quits and go downtown for a meeting, but I'm back out here today and I'm not tilling, but I have brought the big guns and we're going to see if we can get this pump off. I looked it up, a new set of leathers is gonna run me about 30 bucks, a new pump's gonna run me about 75 bucks. So I think what I'm gonna do is take this thing home, see if I can JB Weld and or screw that thing back onto that guy somehow. I think JB Weld will probably do me well enough, but we shall see. And then I'm going to replace both the leathers and then hopefully I can come back out here, spin it back on and uh, we'll be good to go. But in the meantime, I'm going to throw the, the driver pipe nipple on there just to keep bird poop out. And uh, hopefully it all comes off in one piece. But I have a funny feeling that uh, since I couldn't take this off um, just by spinning it by the handle, I have a feeling that if, if I put one of those guys 
on there, it's just going to crush like a can. So I'm going to try and use the strap wrench, but I don't know if it'll hold. We shall see. All right, well, after much grunting and groaning, we got that off. That was way too hard. Um, I eventually got one of these um, pipe wrenches to just barely fit, and I wedged it behind the bolt on one side and over here on the other. And I mean, I was like an eighth of an inch uh, from not being able to do that. And then I used that as a cheater bar and my trailer hitch as a cheater bar. And I had just enough upper body strength and just enough torque or just enough leverage that I was able to break it free. If I'd had um, two two foot pieces of pipe, I would have been a lot easier. But with what I had, uh, if I had two two foot pieces of pipe and two 16 inch, uh, what you call it, pipe wrenches, it would have been a lot easier, but it's off. So that is going to go home and I am going to attempt to fix that. And if I can fix it, we'll bring it right back out here and we'll be about $40 poorer after a new set of leathers and some JB Weld. But hopefully that'll be enough to put that back out here. Not that I'm gonna use it, but it does at least look nice and people like things that look nice. So yeah, okie dokie. Well, it's 15 degrees hotter and a week and a half later because I caught the cough. I had to push back our volunteer crew to next Monday, but I was able to come out here this Monday and just till everything up. So I came out here and I sprayed all of the plants inside the entire perimeter of the fence. And then I came out and I tilled absolutely everything inside of the fence and I sprayed all the way up to here. So I let that soak in for about two hours before I came back and tilled it so that it could get down into the plants. Ideally, I would have let it sit for a couple days before I tilled it, but Eh, I'm out here. I got the tiller. Might as well do it. I only sprayed it because I had extra spray left over while I was uh, spraying stuff on the trails. But yeah, we got a rose pretty much mostly made. But anywho, that is done. So now I think I could probably put the fence up if I really want to. Um, I might do that this afternoon. I may not. I don't know. Um, I shall see. I'm out of water and I'm already sweating like a like a soaker hose, so may not do that, but I may put the fence up today, may not, but anywho, it's all tilled up. Um, interesting thing, I probably saw about two dozen feral cotton seedlings coming up, so that's interesting to note. It is now 2nd of May, so I, ideally I would be planting this week, but I'm not. I'm going to be planting probably late next week, but so long as we have rain next week, that shouldn't be an issue, so that probably will be to the benefit, but we shall see. It's tilled. Okie dokie. Well, the new deer fence is up, and uh, I used my contraption here, my DIY wire spooler releaser doohickey that I made. Um, works like a charm, except when it doesn't. Well, except when it hits you in the hand going like 120 RPM. But uh, as far as the releasing the wire thing, uh, it works really well. So I have now used this deer fence uh, design on three separate gardens and so far so good it is working out really well it's uh, relatively cheap relatively fast and as permanent as you want it to be at least as long as this electric fence wire will last it's 17 gauge electric fence wire with t-posts on the corners and t-post uh, electric fence wire insulators and you just basically set it you know about eight inches at the bottom a foot at the top you just space it accordingly um, I drive them to about six foot. You drive them in at like maybe a 10 degree angle like that. This guy was like this. And then I have those tensioners over there that you put on the wire when you string it. And you just tension them down and then it pulls the corner posts in. And yeah, pulls it nice and taut. Deer stay out of it. Um, if you set it up correctly on the front end, you can electrify it if you want to, but I don't fool with that because I don't really care that much and then for a gate you just put two t-posts uh, about three and a half foot apart and uh, then you just get a four foot by about ten foot piece of uh, weld wire and you just drape it over the top and then you just put some stakes down at the bottom and you got a gate you take the stakes out and when you want to use it you just swing it out like that and you walk in and out simple as if you put the the insulators facing outward then you can actually hook the wire into those when you drape it over like that. You don't have to have stakes on the bottom, but uh, they're not as stable and you can't um, set it up to be electrified if you do that. Also, you can't electrify this fence or that gate anyway, because, you know, metal. 
and it's touching the ground. But, you know, you can catch my drift. So anywho, this will absolutely keep the deer out and the neighbor's dogs out and the tourists and kids and everything else for the most part, except for rabbits. And yeah, um, this is the same thing I'm using on my pollinator garden over there. It's the same thing I'm using at my garden at my house. So this should be more than plenty. Now all I need to do is run irrigation from that hose reel all the way up over here. It's about 275 feet. Drive that post in the ground right there, mount it up, put the irrigation head on it, route all the in-bed irrigation, put down the fabric, and we're ready to plant. Easier said than done. All right, so here's a flashback future me is editing in where I am preparing these four inch PVC sewer caps um, to create covers for the four way and three way connectors in the irrigation system. So because I'm going to have the whole irrigation system underneath fabric, um, I need these plastic fittings to not get stepped on by my big fat clod hoppers uh, when I'm, you know, crunching around out there and uh, have this split and blow water everywhere and I have to pull up fabric and service it all. Um, so I am making these PVC caps into protectors that when I have the irrigation set up will be like that so that I step on this rather than on these fittings. I'm doing that by taking a one and a half inch hole saw, drilling out a hole on either side. I just set this guy on top and then just marked out a point and then measured out three quarters of an inch down. Then I'm taking the hole saw, cutting holes out, and then I'm taking the reciprocating saw and just cutting it into a U-shape, more or less. And yeah, that's pretty simple, but that's a cheap, easy fix to protect these guys so that they don't get stepped on and they should last forever. Um, I'm probably going to bury these a little bit underground uh, whenever I do the bed, um, but I mean, that you're probably already seeing that. I don't know why I'm rambling. This is past me. This is before I even have the... I just took the fabric out of the ground for you, breaking your immersion, breaking the fourth wall here. But anywho, back to future me. All right, so here's what the irrigation system looks like before we put down the landscape fabric. And here's the landscape fabric. That's very white. I'm already snow blind. Oh, hopefully I don't regret this. Anywho, um, my AmeriCorps crew left me about three hours ago and I have just finished digging this 250-ish foot trench all the way up around and back to the spigot and now I'm going to lay this three-quarter inch um, irrigation line um, all up inside of there so that I can kick a little bit of dirt in there it's supposed to rain on Friday so I got to get it done today pretty much so great got another at least hour if not two hours ahead of me before I get to go home and yeah gonna hook all that up uh, I don't know I guess I'll try I'll try and put in the 4x4 today at least but I'm not gonna hook up the whole irrigation head or anything or leak test it. I can, I can do that Friday morning. And yeah, I ain't got much time, so I'm gonna hit hot and heavy. All right, here's the three quarter inch line hooked up to the hose bib. So uh, whenever I want, I can just open this valve. Come on, Which one of these directions. There you go. And here, I'm not gonna do that right now because I don't have anything hooked up. I also haven't buried the hose the entire way, so. Uh, might kind of do something funny in there, but anywho, it's like seven o'clock already, and uh, I have buried maybe 20% of of the line. So uh, I think I'm gonna have to do that tomorrow, but I'm gonna see what I can do tonight because my back is already gone, and uh, I'm not gonna have any more back or probably time the rest of the week. So <sighs> wish me luck, but I got I got a lot a lot of dirt to move. Well, it's now 8 p.m. and I've buried the entire irrigation line, and I think I'm gonna go turn on the spigot and see if water comes out, because I either want to end today on a good note or horrible note. Either way, I'm definitely not doing anything more today. I need a beer or 17. <laughs> all right, here goes nothing. Let's see if that was all for nothing. Come on now. There 
it's still going. Lord. There it goes. Woo! Success. All right, well, I'm going to cut this off. I don't want that eating a hole oh, through over there. But we have water, and it's at least getting there to in some capacity, way, shape, and form. And it looks like it's coming out at full force. So uh, what more can a man hope for? Okie dokie. Well, I don't see any puddles yet. Except for that one, that one doesn't count. Okie dokie, we're back out at the cotton plot, which is very bright, hurts my eyes. But uh, we are going to finish the irrigation head. Then I've got this board that I have two inch holes drilled in because it's the biggest hole bit, or hole saw bit I had. And uh, we're going to mark three foot from the center or wherever the first convenient opening is on the fabric. And then I have a propane gun. And I'm gonna lay this board on there and try and burn holes through it because so I'd much rather have two inch cauterized holes than like the five to six inch flaps I was cutting before way easier to manage the flaps tend to beat the ceilings to death so hopefully this will work um, I'm hoping the propane torch is just enough heat to melt this fabric and not enough that it's going to go straight down and burn my irrigation line so we'll see about that I'm also going to try and cauterize the ends just so I stop having all these strings but we'll see so uh, this will be an experiment, and hopefully it doesn't go horribly awry. But uh, I think I should probably finish the irrigation head and then flush the system and get water in those um, in those lines so that whenever I uh, start burning holes through here, there's water in the tubes, and that can help insulate it uh, thermally, and so I have a, a much lower risk of melting uh, my polytube. But we shall see. And if all goes well today, we're going to be putting seeds in the ground. Okie dokie, there's the irrigation head for the cotton. So, what we have here is a three quarter inch supply line coming in, goes up to a uh, three quarter inch poly tube um, to male pipe thread adapter, which then threads into this uh, three quarter inch um, uh, female pipe thread elbow, which goes into this five and a half inch male pipe thread nipple, which goes into this um, female pipe thread to like, 30, 45 degree, 45 degree um, hose bib, which goes out to male uh, hose thread, which goes down into this um, hose splitter, which has an end cap on this side. So if I ever want to hook up a garden hose, just pop it right on there. Can just route it anywhere. I should probably put an elbow there and some kind of brace. Uh, that's just screwed in there. Uh, and additionally, that was a one and a quarter inch spade bit hole through there. And uh, this guy will keep it from backing out if those screws ever give, but I want to put like an escutcheon on there or something if you want to be fancy. I'm probably not going to. That goes down to a three quarter inch pipe thread, or sorry, a hose thread, flushable filter. So I can just open that, blow everything out right there on the dirt, create a nice big erosion hole. Um, I can turn that if I want to, but I'm going to leave it right there. That goes down here to this orbit timer, which I forgot the batteries for, so it's not going to work. And uh, then that runs down here to a 40 psi uh, pressure regulator to a uh, hose thread to half inch poly tube starter fitting and uh, that runs down here into the main irrigation line which runs all the way over there and I have an end cap down there in case I ever want to flush the main line but I have to pull the fabric over there so I probably should sister in this piece of half inch poly tube so that I can access it and um, yeah that's the setup now I just need to test it and make sure it's all leak proof all right, so we're just about done burning holes. Got them on two foot spacing, six foot in the middle. I'm trying to leave between three and four feet on either end for weed encroachment. I might add one more hole on the end of each. I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing. So I got this seven foot board with holes drilled in it every two foot. They're two inch holes, probably should be three. And I've got this cheapo propane torch on its lowest, lowest setting, just coming in here. Doing a little bit of that. A little bit of that. A little bit of that, and a little bit of that. Thankfully, this propane torch does not put out enough heat uh, to be able to melt the irrigation tube without some serious effort. And uh, this landscape fabric just melts like instantly. So I've gone around and cauterized everything, and I've got pretty much all the holes done, and now I'm gonna finish this up. Uh, and I can't shut this off because it has to be on like physically the lowest setting this valve will do, or it goes out when I turn it upside down. So 
yeah, let me get back to it. Okie dokie. So I've pressurized the system. Uh, so let's open up this and that immediately blows. Um, yeah, that, these Y fittings from Drip, drip what is it, Dripworks? Uh, kind of suck ass, I had to reverse the gasket on the other one, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But uh, yeah, let's see if it at least is pressurized up to the filter. Might just be the air. Oh boy. Yeah. So we're gonna have to pull that off. Oh, that's annoying. But uh, yeah, I just had to flip the gasket over in there to get that one to stop. But yeah, it looks like that fitting's leaking too. Interesting. Anyway, not a big fan of that, but uh, we're gonna work on that. And we're gonna make it not do that. All right, so we're definitely going to need a new Y fitting because this one's just a pizza shit. Um, so yeah. I have to go find one of those and pick one of those up. I uh, need one with a pivot so I can be able to, you know, line all this stuff up. But that's really annoying. Those things were, they weren't particularly cheap. They were like 12 bucks. But um, this one just leaks like an absolute sieve up here at the top. Um, I have a slow leak coming out here, but that's manageable. Um, this one, as soon as I run pressure to it, it just blows all out, all around there. And uh, I don't know if that's because it's getting 55 PSI, uh, in which case I should probably run that pressure, pressure regulator right up there in front of the Y splitter, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. So uh, yeah, not really sure what to do about this. This thing is really tight. Um, so yeah, kind of annoying, but uh, I'll get over it. Just a small kink. It'll work uh, for the time being running like that, but I'd rather not have it just dump water right on top of the timer all the time. So we'll run down the hardware store, pick one of those up and uh, then get some batteries, throw that in there and we'll be able to test it. But before we do that, I'm gonna plant. So uh, I've got seed from 2020, just because we had a miserable crop last year and had a bunch of the seed already prepared and I would have had to prepare the stuff from 2021. So I'm going to do the same thing I do every year, put four seeds in each hole, try and put them about half inch to three quarter of an inch under the soil. And uh, it is the third week of May. Um, would have liked to have done this two weeks ago, but here we are. And uh, hopefully this later start, along with the irrigation, will mean that these plants shoot up just like a weed and uh, then they'll be flowering real early and hopefully i won't have any additional problems and uh, hopefully they're not a uh, they're not nutrient deficient but we'll see i'm getting digging in the dirt okie dokie all the seeds have been sown we have exactly 100 spaces i put out exactly 400 seeds and uh, yeah i'm very snow blind so uh but i really like these holes to have been three inches i'm gonna have to go out and buy a three inch hole saw um just so i have that may need to come back with a you know a template again and widen these up in the next week for the seeds come up but yeah they're all on the ground so they are indeed planted the clock starts now so in two weeks so the first day of june or something we should have plants coming up so uh we shall see might come up a little bit earlier might only be a 10 day period rather than an average 14 day period with this heat but we'll see i'm gonna run the hardware store we're gonna fix that uh stack I'm gonna think about these uh, these holes and whether or not I wanna widen them up to three inches before I get too far, and uh, yeah. Then uh, all our prep is done for the season. All right, well, I got a new splitter on here. I just turned on water, so uh, let's open her up and see if this does any better. I have a feeling it's just gonna leak like a sieve. Oh, we're not leaking at all. That's a good sign. All right, awesome. Now uh, I just need to go find some AA batteries. Good lord, this thing is stiff. All right, it's the next day. Um, I just figured out that a uh, your regular old bog standard uh, tin can is exactly two inches and seven eighths in diameter. So I just used that to widen up these holes a good um, half an inch. So uh, I'll go back and do that for the rest of these on a later date, it's a matter of time right now. Also got some stakes for the gate so I could keep that closed. Also learned that I can kind of just walk my way through the third and fourth row if I really want to. And I got some double A's for the timer. So we are going to pressurize the system, turn that timer on and uh, see if something magical happens.
Oh, there we go. We got goo. I don't hear any massive leaks yet, so that's probably a good sign. We'll let that fill up. Um, we'll see if any of these in caps are leaking or not. And uh, then I'll pop, probably pop this one down here open. You know, just to help bleed the system so it's not pushing everything through those um, labyrinthian valves or whatever they call them. Well, maybe I won't. I'll just check on the other end caps. Yeah. No leaks. That's a good sign. And we have water coming out of the emitter, so... I call that good. Is, do I hear a leak? Thought I heard a leak. Then it went away. Must just be air being bled. Thought I heard something leaking from over here. It's not, just must be air farts. So anyway, yeah, um, I will troubleshoot anything that shows up with the irrigation system. And I'm gonna come back out here maybe this afternoon, widen those up. And uh, yeah, we'll just let that air hammer for a little bit. Maybe vent it some. And yeah, I think that's, uh, that's the end of uh, this episode. Uh, now I just need to come out here and do those little things I said I need to do, just to make sure everything's running properly. Now we wait on seeds to germinate. So uh, if you like what I'm doing here, if uh, you want to see the rest of this saga on uh, reviving uh, the lost strain of Sea Island Cotton from Bleak Hall, then uh, how about you like the video? Go down there, comment, uh, give me feedback on uh, what you want to see me do and how I can improve this plot. And uh, if you want to see the rest of the story, you got to subscribe. So uh, smash that subscribe button. And until next time, I'm out. Mm -hmm.